Hi, welcome to another video. So, I recently told you guys how you can use Vector Shift to make a whole personal AI assistant with it, which was pretty good for sure. In that video, I also asked if you guys wanted more videos on it, and many people commented saying yes. So, I thought I'd talk about a specific feature this time, and how you can use it. Today, I'll be focusing on the knowledge base options and integrations. And because I like coding, I'll mainly focus on using knowledge bases for AI coding with Ader and Klein. But let's talk about the knowledge bases and how they're different from a single markdown file, which I recently covered. Now, knowledge bases or integrations in VectorShift allow you to give it a ton of data. And then what VectorShift does is take your unstructured and messy data and make it kind of AI ready, only supplying the data your LLM needs for the prompt you give. This is a major point because it's what makes it different from the unstructured data that we have in markdowns. For example, let's say we put in a whole documentation of code in a markdown file. But when the knowledge base is really big and you give it to an LLM, then the LLM will start hallucinating because each of them has a set context length and will start forgetting stuff like me. Plus, don't ask me about the costs because I'd go bankrupt. So, to fix that, you could write a bunch of code and use a bunch of libraries to get the correct data for you and stuff like that. But we don't do that here because not everyone wants to struggle with 2,000 lines of code that give errors at every step and crash your computer. Well, that's where vector shift can come in. Vector shift allows you to basically take a block, stick it in your pipeline, and boom, you get what you want without messing around with stuff. And not just that, it puts your data in a proper structure and creates a whole database for you, which gets queried based on your prompt and everything. It even does OCR, so you can give it images, and it will recognize the characters and add them to the knowledge base as well, which is very cool. It also uses a vector database for all this, which means that the queries it performs will take very little time over the response for the searches because it maps all your stuff in a vector space. I won't go into the details of vector databases, but it's cool. Plus, you don't need to write a bunch of code and blow up your computer to outer space either. Many people also call this advanced rag, apparently, so you can call it that if you want. But enough talk, let's set it up, and I'll also use the API from it to write a pretty basic Python program that turns your natural language into a markdown file. But you can also just use the vector shift chat interface if you don't want to do AI coding like me. Another thing is that I'll be using perplexity as an LLM in all the stuff I do, because even if I don't want to use the knowledge base in any queries, I can just use it to search the web as well, because it should be super cool that way too. Anyway, first of all, sign in to VectorShift. It has a free account, which is great to use. Once you're here, we can create a pipeline directly and configure it with the integrations where it will fetch the knowledge base on its own, like Google Drive, Notion, OneDrive, or a bunch of others. Or if we want to have our own knowledge, which I want because I want to upload a bunch of files with some coding documentation, we can use this knowledge base option. Here, you can drag in these nodes for basic knowledge base retrieval or knowledge with results based on a search and stuff like that. Now, you can see that it asks you to select a knowledge base or create one. So, let's create one. Here, it asks you for some simple things, like the name and stuff. I just keep everything the same and enter a name to create it. Now, you can upload files here, along with integrations from other applications if you want to keep them all in one knowledge base without adding a bunch of blocks. You can also scrape a URL or create a folder. 
I really like this web scraping thing because I can just give it the link here, set it to rescrape every week or something, and it will always be updated in the knowledge base. So, I've added some URLs and a document as well about the Anthropic Computer Use API. Now, once you have the knowledge base set up, you can configure it in your pipeline quite easily. There's a template you can use to get a fully configured pipeline, but let me tell you how to do it from scratch, because that's where the fun is. Anyway, here, you can first make a simple pipeline where the input goes to perplexity, and then you get the output. Now, basically, we just need to add the knowledge base to this. You can do that quite easily by just dragging the knowledge base here. Now, you can see that there's no place to connect the knowledge base. Well, don't worry, because here, in the prompt, we can make variables like this. And here, we can write user question and supply the input as the user question. Then, we create another one called context and supply the context from the knowledge base. So now, we have the knowledge base in our pipeline as well. Now, we can just deploy it. Let's make it a chatbot here. Once we do that and get it all configured, we can now access it. Or if you're using it for something else, like a business chatbot, you can also implement it in Slack, WhatsApp, SMS, and stuff like that, which is also pretty cool. But I have the chatbot here, and it works pretty well, and references the knowledge quite well. But remember what I said. I'm going to create a program that takes the API given by VectorShift to run the pipeline and get the output, which we'll save as a markdown file that we can reference in Klein and Ader. So, here's the code I made based on the API. It takes an input, runs it through the pipeline, and then saves the output as a markdown file. If I run it here with a simple prompt, you can see that we get the output saved as a markdown file, which looks pretty good. Now, if we go over to Klein, we can just reference the markdown file here, and you can see it references that and writes code as we want with the custom knowledge in the markdown file. And because we can have a bunch of knowledge in vector shift, we can just create markdown files and use them, meaning the markdown file will be smaller than the whole knowledge base and help you save costs while getting better results because you won't overflow its context. Plus, you can also create a markdown file based on search as well, which should be amazing as well. You can also do the same in Ader if you want by just using the add command or adding the file to read only in the config file. Once you do that, you can ask it to do something, and it will, which is pretty amazing to say the least. This is a great way for sure. You can configure pipelines to what you need, whether it's like a chatbot, or in my case, an AI coding helper, and that's the best part. You can customize it however you want to use it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.